Good morning. Good morning, brethren. I would ask that we bring our conversations and greetings to a close as we focus, as while we're still, some of us are still gathering, and the worship leaders have just run through the, the bathroom. We're going to stand and we're going to pray and welcome the presence of God into our service. I know we've already done that at home, but we want to do it corporately together today. I know our mother Smith is raring to go with her, with her songs there, bless her. Yeah? Can we all stand? And we're going to all pray together, inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hear what I'm saying? We're inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit into our midst. So when he turns up, what? That means we should be ready to worship or, or, or be in the presence or in worship. I've just shared with Brother Miles a moment ago. He said that the clock is still going. I said, yeah, but we can still take off. So by the time when people come online, we're what? We're in flight. And we want to be in flight. Amen. Bless the Lord on my soul. Let us pray together. Let's pray together. Bless the Lord. Shall we shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. 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 Ah. You ready to worship? You ready to worship? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank God. He's in the house. He's here to bless. Whatever your circumstances, whatever your situation, whatever is going on around you, Look to him. Don't look to the people who are coming up in front. Look to Jesus. And he will supply your need. Amen. Our sister Samara is coming at this time to lead out with the worship team. As we worship God in Jesus' name. Good morning, good morning. We're going to go into a song of worship. The splendor of a king clothed in majesty. Just want to spend some time just appreciating who God is. Not what he can do for us, not what we can take from him, but just appreciating him in all his attributes. For keeping us another week, to keep us another day, providing for our needs. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Splendor of the
help us, Lord, to see how great you are for all the things, Lord, that you have done for us, dear Father God. Open up our eyes and open up our understanding, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, thank you, Lord. Just going to have our scripture reading for the morning. It's taken from 1 Chronicles 16, verses 23 to 31. That's 1 Chronicles 16, verses 23 to 31. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods, for all gods of the people are idols. For the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give to the Lord, O families of the people, give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him, O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. 31 and last. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Shall we say amen to the reading of God's word? Thank you, Lord. We're just going to go into another song of worship as I call the worship team back. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell within. And our God shall supply all our needs. For the cattle on a thousand hills is his. Thank you, Lord.
God Almighty. Thank you, dear Father God. Help us, Lord, to understand, dear Father God, that you are supplier of our needs. That, Lord, you sit high and you look low. That, dear Father God, that we must place ourselves in you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That whatever we need, dear Father God, you will supply our needs. Thank you, Lord. Your word tells us, Lord, worthy are you, O oh Lord, and God to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by you, by your will, they existed and were created. Worthy are you, O oh Lord, and God to receive glory, honor, and power, for you created all things, by your will they existed and were created. We just want to give you the worship, dear Father God. We want to give you the praise. We want to give you the honor. We want to lift up your name, dear Father God. We want to have an encounter with you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to change our spiritual positions, dear Father God. And we may find a reason to worship you, God, that we may understand what you are doing.
Father God, help us, Lord, to see you move. Help us, dear Father God, to see us for who you are. See you for who you are. Thank you, Lord, as we lift up your name. Thank you, God, for opening up doors of opportunities. Thank you, God, for moving us, dear Father God, for those things that want to destroy us. Thank you, God, for the strength that you give. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, because you are worthy, you are worthy. Your heart and me. 
up our eyes to see you, Lord. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Open up our eyes to see you, Lord. And work on our hearts to fill you, Lord. Open up our eyes to see you, God. As you move and as you move. Open up our eyes to see you, Lord. Open up our hearts to fill you, Lord. Open up our eyes to see you, Lord. As you move, as you move, open up our eyes to see you, Lord. Open up our eyes to see you, Lord, and work on our hearts to feel you, Lord. As you move, as you move, open up our eyes to see you, and work upon our hearts to feel you. Open up our eyes, oh Lord, oh Lord. no one like you and there is none beside you open up my eyes and wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me holy there is no one like spiritually open up our eyes spiritually open up our hearts dear father god that lord whatever you are doing dear father god we are not suppressing your spirit in our hearts thank you lord god help us to know who we are in you god help us lord to open up our understanding dear father god help us lord to be transformed by your word help us dear father god to draw close to you Help us, Lord God, to give ourselves to you, Father God. Deal with us accordingly, dear Father God, that you may have the glory. Help our lives, God, to be a light to those, Lord God, that we are around. And let our words, dear Father God, bring encouragement, Lord, to those around us, dear Father God. As you lead us and guide us, O oh Lord, I pray, God, that you would have your way. Have your way, dear Father God, in your children, God. Those, dear Father God, who are burdened, Lord. Those, dear Father God, that don't know where to turn. Those, Lord, who are crying out for you, Father God. That you would equip us, dear Father God, that we realize, Lord, what we have access to. We have access to you. God, our power, dominion, and authority that you have placed within us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to step into you. Take away the fear, dear Father God. Give us your understanding, your knowledge, and your wisdom. Fill us up, dear Father God, afresh and anew as you pour in, dear Father God. And as you pour in, help us, Lord, to pour out. Help us, Lord, to do your will. Help us, to God, to align ourselves with your will. Help us, dear Father God, just to know, Lord, what it is that you want in your house. And bring us into alignment, dear Father God, with your will. I decree and I declare, dear Father God, that our hearts, Lord God, would 
come in line with you in the name of Jesus as you deal with your house. And we pray, Father God, that you would have your way. Have your way, dear Father God. There are many needs in your house. You know every need. You know, dear Father God, what you are doing. You know, God, those who are here, those who are watching, those who are crying out, Lord. Help us just to appreciate you for who you are. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you love us, God, with an everlasting love. Oh, Lord, I understand, Lord, that you are trying to place your house in order. And Lord God, let us not hinder, God, what you are trying to do, Lord, more than what we can see, more than what we can believe, what we believe. There is so much more that God wants of us. There is so much that God wants to do in us. We have to be willing to move when God is moving. We have to be on one account, one accord. Because this is not just about us. It's about our families, our friends, and those who are coming after us. We've got to position ourselves strategically where God wants us to be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is concerned about our needs. We have to open up our hearts and place it before him. Be honest and be truthful. Be obedient and be faithful. Because God is faithful. He's faithful. He never goes back on his word. He never forgets his promise. But we have to walk in alignment with what God is trying to do, what God wants to do, what God is going to do. We have to position ourselves in Christ. That the Lord God would have his way. That the Lord God can have his way. We pray against all those things, dear Father God, that are coming up. To try to hinder and suppress what you are trying to do, God. We speak against it in the name of Christ. That you, Lord, will have your way. This is your house. And your power, your authority is above all. There is no match for who you are. your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let us not take your words lightly. Let us be serious about why we're here, what we want, what you want in us. Father God, thank you, Jesus. Change our heart's position. Help us, God, to detoxify all those things that are not of you. That your heart may dwell within us, Lord. That whatever we speak, Lord, we say we speak what is in the heart. Let what comes from the heart be of you, God. Be of you, your word, and who you are, Lord, God. Not just when we are in this house, Lord, but when we leave this building, God. Let us be a reflection of you working in us, God. Transforming us, changing us. Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. 
Halleluja. 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 Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help us this day, Father God. And let us submit to your will. For we are yours. We are yours. And as I shared the other day, if God was for me when I wasn't for him, when my back was turned against God before I came to Christ, he moved in my life and he did a work in me and I wasn't even aware of it. When I was the one that was probably saying things against God, God was still for me. When I went through my situations that crushed me and hurt me, my back was turned against God. If there was a God, why would he do that? But I didn't know God. What I knew about God was nothing. But if he could bring me through that and have me to where I am now, how much more is God with us? I'm just sharing that to just encourage somebody. He was there when I didn't know him. How much more is he going to be for us now that we are in him? Thank you, Jesus. Just understand who we are in Christ and what he wants for us and of us and with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. I'm just going to call Bishop to do our pastoral prayer. Just meditate on those things and just take for you what is for you and just let the Lord have his way. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. We just honor the Lord our God because He is good. Hallelujah. 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 In the text that was read, um, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 34 said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy is good. Endure it forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just um, uh, welcome welcome you and give God thanks and praise for you. And I just want to especially mention Brendan Donald. He's the first time here. Welcome. Welcome. You're in the right place. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, you are, you'll be getting a, a guest bag, um, a welcome, a guest welcome pack. Um, just uh, make sure that you uh, you uh, complete our feedback card and let us know what you think this morning. God bless you. I wonder if you're going to do something for me, help me to pray this prayer this morning. I want the whole church to join in in our pastoral prayer this morning. I think there's something that we just want to pray and give God thanks for this morning. My God, what a great and awesome God he is. Mighty is he and great is his name. Hallelujah. We just want to celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. We just want to glorify his name today. So there's something within your spirit this morning that I know you just want to say to God. Hallelujah. If you just to say thank you for a couple of minutes, just open your mouth and help me pray this prayer this morning. Hallelujah. God, we mercifully, oh God, we come before your presence this morning. Hallelujah. We salute you today, Jehovah God. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We thank you because you're the God of heaven. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We magnify you your name Jehovah God that as we come Father God of people who are called by your name that we want to celebrate who you are and thank you Almighty God for all that you have done for us Lord
Lord God today my God you brought us one more time I God into this sanctuary my God where we can come to worship where we can come to praise you where we can come to magnify your name where we can come to celebrate who you are and so God we thank you for all that you have done we thank you God my God for moving us to a place of destiny my God we thank you my God for helping us to fulfill our purpose Lord God we thank you my God for the strength you have given us we thank you God for health we thank you God for prosperity Oh God, my Father, we thank you, Almighty God, for seeing, oh Lord God, of through. My God, every toils and snare. My God, for leading us through the valley, for walking with us, Lord God, until we come out through the other side. Lord, we thank you this morning because of your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. And so, Lord God, as you give us authority to bind and loose, Yes, God, we come into your presence and we thank you, oh Lord God, that we are able today to bind every plan of hell. My Lord God, to sabotage, my Lord God, all that you have given us to do. And so, Father in heaven, we thank you that we are able to lose your favor upon our lives. Lord God, we are able, my Lord God, hallelujah, to benefit from your grace today that you have poured out upon us. Us. my God may we thank you as you continue to lead us Lord God and lead this church Lord God we thank you for every individual Lord we thank you right now as you dispatch your word of healing to every home my God where your people are unwell Lord we thank you oh God for their recovery we are thanking you for their healing we are thanking you God for those who you have comforted even even my God in this moment of bereavement yes Lord God your presence is with them and so we thank you God what more can we say that you're excellent Lord you're excellent hallelujah Jesus you're excellent Lord you're excellent and we give you praise and magnify your name hallelujah today God hallelujah as we give you thanks and praise lord because there is none like you hallelujah hallelujah may god be glorified hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus I'm going to call Brother Norman to do our prayer of offering. Good morning, brethren. Can we just stand as we receive today's tithes and offering for some of us it's a joy to give unto the Lord no fret no stress no duress because God loves a cheerful giver for some of us we make a, a sacrificial gift this morning this afternoon God sees the sacrifice and he will honor that sacrifice because you're giving it from a place of goodwill. This is what Nehemiah verses 12, chapter 12 verses 43 and 44 says. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. 
And at that time, were some appointed over the chambers for the treasures, for the offerings, for the first fruits, for the tithes, to gather them out of the fields of the cities, the portion of the law for the priest and the Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priest and, the, and for the Levites that waited, shall we say amen. And so almighty God, as we come into your house this morning to worship you, to glorify and to magnify your holy name. As we make this gesture to you this morning with our tithes and our offering, as we worship you, Father, we pray for your blessing upon our lives, your continued blessing upon our lives. Father, you're worthy. You are worthy, worthy to be praised. And so you require us to worship you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us, even at times when we don't deserve it. But you continue to bless us because you're a loving God. You're a caring God. We thank you for our jobs, the sources of our income. And we pray your blessing wherever these offerings go this morning, that your church will be established here on earth. Father, we give you thanks now and forevermore.
Brother Keenan. I'm just going to read the scripture where today's lesson will be taken from. John 13, verses 1 to 14. That's John 13, verses 1 to 14. Please stand as I read. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world, to the Father having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil already put it into the heart of Judas Issachar, Iscarot, Simon's son to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you would know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him, therefore he said, you are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? It's verse 13. Do you know what I have done to you? You called me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. 14 and last. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Shall we say amen to the reading of God's words? And as our brother comes forward, I pray that our hearts are open to what the Lord is speaking, that we're able to take it away. And apply it to our lives. Amen. Keenan, congregation. You can count on me. I'm working for my Savior. Faithful I will be. I will fight with all my might. You can count on me. Oh, you can count on me. I'm working for my Savior. Faithful life will be. I will fight with all my might. Yes, you can count on me. Oh, you can count on me. I'm working for my Savior. Faithful life. 
I'm working, I'm working for a crown. Yes, I'm working. Yes, I'm working for a crown. Yes, I'm working. I'm working for a crown. And I will wait by and by. Oh, yes, I'm a working. I'm working for a crown. Oh, yes, I'm a working. I'm working for a crown. I'm working. I'm working for a crown. I shall wait. By and by, oh yes, I'm working. I'm working for a crown. Yes, I'm working. I'm working for a crown. I'm working. I'm working for a crown. And I shall wear it by yeah, one more time. to God. We're working for a crown. Oh, hallelujah to God. See, the crown that we're working for, no man on earth can give us that crown. Your best friend can't give it to you. The pastor can't give it to you. Bishop can't give it to you. Oh God, this is a crown that God himself gives to us, his people. Oh, hallelujah. And so I'm working. I'm working for a crown. Hallelujah to God. Anybody in the house working for a crown? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I indeed honor the Holy Spirit of God who is the head of my life. I cannot do anything without him. Hallelujah. He's the reason why I stand here. And just before I get started, let me prepare myself. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Thank God for materials like this. Hallelujah. I, and I just want to greet Bishop Mackenzie our host pastor and ministers in their respective places. Hallelujah. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our blessed Redeemer and soon coming King. Mighty God, as I stand before your people, I just pray just now in short that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight because you are my strength and my redeemer. God, I have nothing to say but thus saith the Lord. And so I pray that you would touch my mouth one more time. I pray that you would release your anointing one more time and let it flow, God, that when your word begins to go forth, Father, it will take root in the lives and the hearts of your people in the name of Jesus and not one individual today will be robbed of the word not one or seed of your word would fall by the wayside today but it would fall on good ground in the name of Jesus Christ 
Father, I surrender myself before you and into your care in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Our scripture for today has, has been read already. St. John chapter 13 from verses 1 to 14. And for a topic which I'd like to uh, attach to this sermon today is servant leadership. Yes, servant leadership. The theme of this sermon consists of what can be deemed as two opposing words, servant and leadership, which of course is in reference to leaders. But after all, doesn't a leader lead and a servant serve? You might ask the question, what business does a leader have fulfilling the role of a servant? What connection is there between a servant and leadership? What is servant leadership? Servant leadership can be defined as leadership that prioritizes the idea of serving the needs of others. And a leadership model whereby the leader focuses his or her attention on the persons they lead. Hallelujah. However, today we find many persons in leadership all over the globe who have mastered the art of serving themselves. This, my brothers and sisters, stems from a place of pride and arrogance, but it is imperative to note that God does not walk with the proud or the scornful. And in our text today, we see Jesus, the perfect example of what it means to be a servant leader. Jesus here in this text is promoting the idea of servanthood amongst his disciples. Jesus knows that his time on earth is coming to an end because he's about to go to the cross not too long. He's about to go back to the father in his glorified form but before he does he felt it of uttermost importance that he talk with his disciples about servanthood. Oh my God. Hallelujah to God. He talked with them about servanthood. And the, the, the main thought I want to leave with you today is that the key to mastering servanthood in God's kingdom is knowing who you are serving. What then are the authentic marks of a servant leader, you may ask? Well, there are three. There are three authentic marks of a servant leader. And the first authentic mark may not be no surprise to us at all, but that word is love. Hallelujah. The text said, no, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come. Because remember in the book of John, Jesus is always saying, my hour has not yet come. But now he's, he's aware that his hour to be glorified with the Father again is imminent. Hallelujah. And, and so, and so he, he's here with the disciples and the text said that, he loved, he said, he, 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 having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Hallelujah. And supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. He said, he loved them to the end. Jesus' public ministry, hallelujah, and time on earth is coming to a close. Uh, the use of the word love here twice emphasizes Jesus' motto. And so while he is concerned about telling them about servanthood, he is saying to them that the key to this servanthood in the kingdom of God is love. Because that is what he spent his time 
him doing when he was walking the earth with the disciples. He loved them. He cared for them. He protected them. He taught them. He educated them. He, he, he provided for them. He showed them many things. He performed miracles in front of them. So here Jesus, their teacher and their master and their Lord is about to leave. And he's saying that the key to this servanthood is love. Hallelujah. Which should be obvious from the care that he gives to them. Anybody know that Jesus cares today? I hear one writer says, oh yes, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long night dreary, I know my Savior cares. Jesus is promoting this, the, the, the key to this servant as love and he would agree with Corinthians which tells us that love is patient and love is kind love does not envy love does not parade itself is not puffed up does not behave rudely does not seek its own is not a provoked thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth bears all things and believes all things hopes all things and endures all things this love that we had that Jesus was talking about we heard briefly last week is this agape love and I want to tell you my brothers and sisters that before coming to Christ if you were a bitter person if you were an angry person when agape gets a hold of you then things begin to change the way that we operated before we no longer operate in that way if we found that we were not able to love before oh God we start to be able to love because agape has touched our lives we talk about the love of God and, and, and how, how much God has done for us. What do we know that when we are in relationship with God or if we profess to talk about this love, then that love should flow out of our lives into other relationships that we have with people. Oh my God. This agape love, this kind of love, my brothers and sisters, is not a love that is based on mere emotions. Why? Because emotions come and go. But rather this love is based on a decision and that we make decisions to love and this commitment to keep a commitment. And therefore, I want to say to us today that leadership is not a right, nor is it an inheritance or an entitlement. We take our cue from Jesus. And those of us who hold such positions within the body of Christ ought to understand today that we are servant leaders. And the servant leader is called to love. A servant leader is called to love in community. And in any community you and I know that there are different types of people. There are different kinds of persons with different types of personalities. Oh God, but I want you to know that irrespective of the dynamics of personalities, it does not excuse us from loving. Oh God. The, 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 the Bible said that, that, that shit, the devil had already put into the heart of Judas to betray him. How many of us know that in a co in community sometimes there are some Judas spirits that are operating. But, but just because there's a Judas spirit operating, it does not mean that you are exempt from loving. Why? Because Judas sat around the table with Jesus. But Jesus did not alter his behavior towards Judas. Oh my God. But sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we alter our love towards each other based on, 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 on somebody's behavior. But a servant leader Hallelujah. is called to love. 
and there is no exemption. Uh, sometimes it hurts like hell. Some of the things that you have to pass through. Oh my God. Uh, but God has called us to love. The Bible said that concerning Jesus that, that, that he loved to the end. What will folks say about you? Will you love to the end? Will you make a conscious decision that, that as long as you live and as long as the breath of life is blowing in your body that you will love to the very end. You will go to the furthest extent to love because we are called to love in community. And when we talk about loving in community, we are talking about loving in the body of Christ. Love is the very foundation of our belief. That is why we are here. That is why we can declare that we are saved. That is why that we can declare that we are born again because of love. And so we are called to love in community. Uh, there's no isolation. We live in a very individualistic society. Yeah. Where well, I don't need nobody. What are we, you good? <laughs> because I know that I need people in my life. We are not called to live out any individualistic life in the kingdom. Yes, we all have our personal calls and our personal assignments. But God's desire is for us to live in community. And that must be in love. And therefore, we must also love with sincerity. There's a call to love with sincerity. No kind of pretense. If you have an issue with me, come and talk to me. No pretending. Don't laugh in my face. And then behind my back, you are stabbing me. Oh, there's a little phrase that they said, I know every skin teeth I laugh with you. You cannot trust everybody. Because of the, 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 the pretense. But God has not called us to be fake people. He has not called us to be artificial. But he's called us to love. Oh God, so irrespective of the attitude. I will love you out of that attitude. I will love you into your deliverance. I don't care what you say about me. Whether I am popular or in your team, yes or no, I will love you. Because that is what God requires of us. Oh God and me, we have to be determined. Because I, I, I know many of us in life can testify that we have come across Judas's relatives. Mm. Yeah. But we have to love consistently. We cannot run intermittently like taps. We have to love consistently. Oh my God. And there are some things that are creeping into the church of God that ought not to be here. The last time I checked, you cannot order people on Amazon. Amazon does not sell people. So how on earth did we end up with this cancel culture as though people are orders and items? And, and, and when persons are serving in positions of leadership, something goes wrong and you cancel them like they're an order. Shut them down. Oh my God. And even if we were an order, we did not come in your name. We came in Jesus' name. So you don't have a right. We don't have a right to cancel anybody. What needs to take place is a restorative conversation. Oh my God in heaven. And not canceling nobody around here. Oh God in heaven. This is the church of the living God. If you want to cancel things, go do something on Amazon. But not in here. This is the church of God. 
Oh my God in heaven. The devil is a liar. We are a people of love and certain things are not to be found amongst the body of Christ. Yes, there are Judas's and Jezebel's. Oh my God, that, 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 that those spirits seem to operate worldwide in the body of Christ. That's why sometimes you, 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 you notice that there's a similar narrative in every single church that exists. Mm. What's, the, what, what's, what's the common ground? Oh, the spirit of Jezebel and Judas is in operation, but we are called to love. I'm aware time is going, but the second authentic mark of a servant leader is action. The first one was love, and the second one was action. Because you cannot love with your mouth alone. Love requires some actions. And so the text said, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he come from God and was going back to God. Before he went back to God, the text said that he rose up from supper because he had empty now, so he rose up from supper. Oh my God. This is the king of kings and the lord of lords. This is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. He rose up. Why? Because the second authentic uh, mark of a servant leader is action. And the Bible said that he began to wash the feet of his, in fact, he took the towel. Oh my God. And he began to, 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 to gird himself and wash the feet of his disciples. Sir Peter, as usual, had something to say about it. But he didn't really understand. He was just looking at things from a natural perspective. But Jesus said, this is what I must do. Because if I don't wash, oh God, if I don't wash your feet, then you have no partner lot with me me oh god so he gets up and he begins to wash no no what a king because i am confident that if you were to go to to the palace the king would by no means be washing his servant's feet he would not be doing it oh my god but jesus king jesus he gets up Oh my God. And he washes, oh hallelujah, the feet of his disciples. Oh hallelujah to God. The Bible said, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. My brothers and sisters, there is a call to stand. There is a call to attention. If, if Jesus Christ could get up, oh God, who are we to think that it's okay to be inactive when we want to be an active at another time? There is a call to stand. Oh my God. In Christendom today, we find that there are many persons who are seated and are happy to call the shots from being seated but not really doing anything have the most input but little output oh my god but, 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 but it's imperative that we rise and i charge us as a church of god that we must rise and be ready for action be ready for service i come by to tell somebody that it's time to report for duty in the kingdom of god mm. because god has a plan for each and every one of us there's a call to stand I cannot sit down like I own the place. I cannot sit down like it's my hands that have the nail prints in them. I cannot sit down like I am the king. There must be action. Oh, hallelujah. There's a call to stand. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. There's a call to stand and there's a call to service. Hallelujah. And when I say service, it simply means work. And, and, and who I serve, oh hallelujah. You know that we serve each other in the kingdom. Because, because in serving each other is an extension of serving God. And, and so because God is at the root of this thing, I cannot pick and choose who I serve. Oh God, I cannot decide that I'm going to serve this one, but I'm not going to serve the other one. I've got to serve everybody within my reach. I have to serve everybody that God allows to cross my path because we are called to service oh my god yeah it's a call to service we cannot be selective about this service this is god's kingdom you know there are many people who are building their own kingdoms but this is God's kingdom and, and certain things that, that seem to want to creep into the church and creep into the kingdom ought not to be. You remember when you were younger and maybe you think so you're a big man now. I just start give a little back chat and they tell you I, I, I don't know where you got that attitude from but but wherever you get it from you better take it back because while you're living under my roof it's not going to work and you're going to abide by my rules so why do we often believe that it is um all right thank you sir to 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 bring in different kinds of attitude and, and mindsets and behaviors that do not line up with the word of God at all. Jesus of mercy. Hi. Hey. Mighty God. It's not to be so. It's not to be so. This is the kingdom of God. And the order of things in the kingdom is love. And so that has to be demonstrated through our actions. The greatest example I said before that we have of a servant leader was Jesus Christ himself. He served the good. And he served the not so good. He didn't leave anybody out. In actual fact... Uh, the, 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 the religious elite of the day, those who thought they were somewhere, they had a problem with the kind of people and service that Jesus offered because he loved everybody. Mm. People who sometimes we wouldn't act, even persons wouldn't accept in the church, Jesus would be around them. And so we... In, 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 in taking this, having this mark of action, we have to wash one another's feet. You know, it was customary at that time because they were walking some dusty roads. And so when persons entered into people's homes, they would wash their feet. And it was actually a servant's role. So Jesus took the role of a servant in doing that. But you and I, my brothers and sisters, there are some of our own brothers and sisters who have have walked the dusty roads of life. Hallelujah. And they need us to come alongside them. And help. And so this is a call to action. In 2024. By the grace of God. There is a call to action. And we must be prepared. To roll up our sleeves. And get busy in the kingdom of God when I say busy I don't mean busy body but busy in the kingdom for the glory of God time for action and the third authentic mark of a servant leader is humility Jesus said if I then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 
Lord and teacher. Sounds like very, some very important titles to me. Lord and, and, and teacher. Jesus had this status in the lives of his disciples. Considering he had walked the earth with them for quite a while. But yet still, even though he, he was and is the Messiah, he put that aside. Oh, hallelujah to God. And he stopped to wash their feet. The Bible said in the book of Philippians that he did not consider it robbery. Oh God, but he made himself of no reputation. He took on the form of a human being. Oh God, hallelujah. He changed forms basically. Came as that like of a bond servant. But yet this is the man that Jesus that was previously glorified with God the Father. But he could step down into earth. He humbled himself the Bible said even until the point of death. That tells me something about this kind of humility. Some, there are some times where we are going to have to die to self. Mm. Yeah. There's a call to be humble. You know why? It, it, it doesn't make sense me trying to behave like I'm better than you. You know why? Because all of us are going to die unless the rapture comes. We're not here to stay. We're just passing through. So while we are passing through, why not make it worthwhile? Because somebody we still have to witness. Somebody say ashes to ashes and dust to dust. So it really doesn't make sense. Me behaving like I am of extra importance more than you. It doesn't make sense. Because, as I said, unless the rapture comes, we will die. It's, it's a fact. So the Bible would say to us, humble yourselves under the almighty hand of God. That if there is to be any exaltation in due season... He will instigate the exalting. Oh my God. Humility is important. It's very important. Because pride comes before a fall. Hallelujah to God. Pride comes before a fall. And so I, I don't want to be a person who walk around in pride and arrogance. To the point that I can be in danger. But because I know it all, nobody can talk to me. The devil is a liar. Not in 2024. Not in 2024. We are the church of the living God. And we're going to walk in humility by the grace of God. We are not perfect people. On the other hand, we are striving for perfection. Because we have a goal and an aim in mind. And that is to be like Jesus Christ. And we can say like Paul, I have been crucified with Christ. It is not I that liveth, but it is the Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh is by faith. If we are really declaring that we have been crucified with Christ. Then Christ must be seen more than us. Hallelujah. Let us walk in humility before the Lord because we are flesh. We used to say here today, gone tomorrow. But here today, gone today. That's the harsh reality. Let us walk in humility because we are called to be servants lead us. May God bless you and may God keep you.
there's somebody that we can can pray for. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here and you have a need. Mm. God is able to meet that need. He's able to supply our needs. He's, na he's able to meet us where we are. <laughs> the things that seem impossible, God specializes in those things. Is there any river that seems uncrossable? Is there a mountain you cannot tunnel through? God specializes. In the things that seem impossible, and he can do what no other can do. Is there any river that seems uncrossable? Is there a mountain you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in the things that seem impossible. And he can do what no other can do. Is there any river that seems uncrossable? Is there a mountain you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in the things that seem impossible. And he can do what no other can do. God specializes in the things that seems impossible. And he can do what no other can do. Is there any river that seems uncrossable? Is there a mountain you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in the things that seem impossible. And he can do what no other can do. Is there any river that seems uncrossable? Is there a mountain you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in the things that seem impossible. And you can do what no other can do. There is no failure in God can do, there 
cut through and see there is no failure in God there is no failure in God there is no failure in God you can search the records through and see what God can do there is no in God you can search the records through and see what God can do there is no failure in God most righteous and eternal heavenly father we thank you for your people standing here at this altar. We thank you, O oh God, for the prayers that have already gone up ahead. And Father, we are thanking you in advance now that you have heard and you have answered our prayers because the Bible says that before we ask, you already know our needs. And so I pray, mighty God, today that Father, your people will experience a testimony of your goodness and your mercy towards them. I pray, God Almighty, that as they leave this altar that it shall be well with them all the days of their life I pray that you would keep them in good health and you would keep them in good strength you would protect them oh God you would watch over them your hand would rest upon their lives and you would grant them victory in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen hallelujah the cafe will be open um, straight after church for those who are not on fasting uh, drinks and snacks are free so please feel free to just stay and just say hi Sunday worship early prayer 9.15 until 9.45 Sunday school 10 until 11 morning worship 11.15 until 1 and evening worship as per the bulletin weekly events local fasting this will be individual during January as we continue with a 21 day fast, it will resume, in-house fasting will resume in February. Wednesday prayer meeting, 7.30 until nine in person and auxiliaries are suspended until further notice. So we are broaching on the final week of the fast. For those who didn't manage to start, you can join for the, um, the final week. We'll be having a prayer meeting via Zoom tomorrow and in-house prayer meeting on Wednesday and National Week of Prayer will be incorporated in this week's um, fasting and prayer, and any particular prayer points will be shared in the notice board chat. For those who are free this evening, there is an invitation to the Churches Together in Dudley Unity Service. That will be 4 p.m., and it will take place at the Salvation Army up at North Street. District Communion Service will be here next week, Sunday, 6 p.m. until 8 p.m., February the 10th will be our Education Month conference, and this will take place at the New Testament Church of God, Handsworth, and it will include the Oliver Lysite Lecture, workshops, and more. Registration is available via Eventbrite. Most of you will now be aware of the passing of our Bishop, Dr. Joseph Roberts. For those who have been here longer than me, you'll remember him from Wellington Church when they were on the Dudley District. He has gone on to be with the Lord, and the funeral will be Thursday the 15th of February, and this will take place at New Testament Church of God, Handsworth, starting at 10 a.m. 
There will be a memorial mass choir and all are welcome to join and practice, practices will be at the Munn Street Church Thursday the 25th of January and Thursday the 8th of February, 7.15 until 9.15. A save the date for women. We, you know that we have our Women to Women conference. This year will be 9th of March, Saturday the 9th of March. Expected registration is around £10, so just start to tell your female friends and sisters and just tell them to get ready to join for that day. Further information will follow. Sister June has arranged um, small women's groups with assigned leads. This is to ensure that all women in the church get pastoral support as needed. You'll be informed of any church events and offers of prayer. And this is going to be particularly useful for the shuttings and those who are infrequent attenders. Please advise Sister June or Sister Herfer if you do not wish to be included or to have your details shared. The groups will start February the 1st, so you will need to let them know before that date. National Convention will be back in Newport this year, Friday the 23rd to Sunday the 25th. Registration will be done via Eventbrite. There will be concessions for seniors, full-time students and those who are unemployed. And there will also be a booking code um, giving 10% off a group of hotels that are in the vicinity of the arena. I'm not going to share those codes publicly because they are for new tea. We don't want anybody who just happens to be looking to find a code and take up your space in that hotel. So the full information will be shared in the notice board chat. And just to remember the Black Country Food Bank, any donations that you can offer will be greatly appreciated. Just gonna invite you to stand and to say the benediction. And just to say for those who are worshiping with us, on, with us online today, thank you so much for being with us. Subscribe, share the link so others can also join in our worship services. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>